Our last topic for this week is all about communication for work purposes. Let's start. Now, communication types and how to improve each one. We tackle this one from the very beginning of our class. Uh, we talk about a verbal communication. And we talk about body language and facial expressions also. Um, phone conversations and written communication. Those are the things that we talk about from lesson one, two, and three. So let's have this one. The importance of strong communication runs deep within a business. Below are varied reasons you should be paying attention. First one is team building. Building effective teams boasts uh, communication confidence of every team member. This is in turn will improve morale of employee satisfaction. So it is really important um, in a certain organization that we're going to have a team building. Even our school, um, if you belong in a certain organization, for example, student council, um, the students affairs uh, usually hold um, a team building for them. So that's one way of getting to know each other and then uh, hearing different sides of individuals, right? And that would also um, help us um, to work as a team and then feel comfortable um, working with each other, especially um, if you are working in a certain company. So that is the importance of team building. Um, another one, team building also gives everyone a voice, having a voice and being listened to, whether it be uh, in regards to an idea or about a complaint they need to make would create smooth relationship. So there would be a time that uh, you're going to have or you will be joining a team building. Then you will experience um, this kind of forum wherein you will have a time to hear your side and be heard or you will have in an open forum um, discussions. Then we have innovation. Innovation relies heavily on this which encourages communication, is an innovative one that contributes healthy uh, production. Another one is the use of presentations. It is easy to grasp information using visual presentation, like PowerPoint presentation. This will give the employees an opportunity to get certain things clearer for better understanding. So the same thing. Um, in my department, when we usually have our meeting, faculty meeting, our head or our dean usually use PowerPoint um, presentation, um, all the things that we're going to have or the agenda that we're going to discuss during our meeting. And growth. Communication can be viewed both internally and externally by being joined up internally and having strong lines of communication, you are ensuring that the message you are delivering externally is consistent. So that is the importance of having a growth. Then strong management. When managers are strong communicators, they are able to manage their teams. The delegation of tasks, conflict management, motivation and relationship building, all key responsibilities of any manager are all much easier when you are a strong communicator. So that is the most important thing. You need to talk and communicate um, to your subordinates or to your employees. Then open meeting. This refers to a kind of forum that every team member can see, hear, and feel what you are saying. You also have communication via training. Training should be tailored towards communicating certain information, especially it's part of their career growth. 
Okay, so we also do this one. I experience this kind of um, event. So we do open meeting and then communication via trading. Then use simple words. It means that um, we need to use simple words to avoid ambiguous words, um, erroneous words, or confusing words. Use only words that can be easily understood by all employees. Use appropriate tone of voice. The tone of your voice in the exchange of communication must be appropriate to avoid conflict and misunderstanding. So the tone is really important, right? So, yeah, that's the voice. Like, um, should we, um, we should not be misunderstood by our colleagues or employees. So that's really important. Then let's have this one. Let's go now to business writing. Writing business letters effectively. Business writing is a type of written communication with standard structure and style. It addresses the needs of specific audiences and has writing style and list for a particular topic that concerns um, business. Effective written messages are results of observance to principles, rules of action, or conduct, general truths, and guidelines in writing. So that's the most important thing. Um, observance of principles, rules of action or conduct, then general truths, um, truths of guidelines in about writing. So here, advantages of written communication. Written messages can be edited and revised several times before they are sent so that the content can be structured to maximum effect like facts and figures. Written communication is a kind of reference or evidence that provides a permanent record and can be saved for later study. Then written forms of communication enable recipients to have more time to review the message or the messages and provide appropriate feedback. Right. So, for example, in my case, um, when I ask certain requests um, related to my job, so I usually make uh, a formal letter to my head, and then I send uh, send it via email. I think email is more um, formal than asking certain requests via Facebook or Messenger or even a text. So that's what I do. Then written forms of communication can reach to all types of people. Maybe you are rich or poor, professional or unprofessional, young or old and enable or disabled. Good writing skills lead to increase of customer or client satisfaction, improve inter-organizational inter efficiency, and enhance image in the community and industry. So that is basically the importance of written communication, especially if you are asking for complaints, right? So it would be better if you're going to write a letter um, to the person you wish to hear your side rather than saying everything through our social media account. Okay. Then there are elements to consider before writing a business document. Next is the purpose. Why are you writing? This will serve as the right direction and reference and path of your details. This will set the tone, the style, and structure of your letter. This is your message and your goal. So usually, um, if I write, for example, um, I am writing to have a further clarification regarding my salary. Or um, from the, the first line of my statement would be like, I am writing to express my disappointment or complain about. I need to be clarified. I can also say I am writing to apply for a vacant position available in your company. So that's um, I usually do um, every time I write a formal letter. 
So that's the first line of my uh, paragraph. Then the audience, another significant step in order to make an impact on your audience is to know them, like who you are writing to. Okay, so to whom this letter would be addressed to. Okay, so that's the very important thing. Then there are four types of business communication um, stated by Barbie Carpenter of Demand Media um, or Digital Marketing Agency. So she conceptualized um, the following. Results-oriented communication. This type of correspondence encourages people, especially those in the office, to take actions or follow specific instructions. An example of this is a memorandum with a weekly goals of a team. It is expected to be motivational and produce solid results. So in a certain organization, um, your head might be uh, giving you a certain memo. Uh, we call that one also an inter-office memo, like within the department. Okay, so whatever the content of that memo, in order that um, everyone will be informed of the ongoing or um, future activities. So that is um, what she wants us to um, know. Then another one, informal, um, informational, I'm sorry, informational communication. Some documents are eyeing a goal, but some are simply to inform the audience. For example, an email can be about a change in a policy, a health manual for a particular program or facility, or changes in the organizational structure. So that is informational communication. So usually your head um, will send you an email regarding um, the different changes or announcement given by the, the head or the administration and then informing us about what the uh, what transpired no, during their meeting. So that's one. So that also we will be informed, okay? Especially if we belong to the rank and file. Then negative communication. There are inevitable events in the workplace that may be pleasing to everyone, or not pleasing rather. Writing about them requires careful planning. For example, a human resources specialist might have to uh, write a letter about layoff or severance package, okay, or a certain memo. So we should always think about um, when to uh, write a memo to our employees, to our colleagues, okay. So we need to um, think about that many times, right? So it's not easy um, to receive a memo. Right? So if there are certain um, aspects that um, a certain employee somehow um, might be or misbehaving or what, then if there's a need for me, if there's a need to, to talk in person, so we need to talk. We will have an open communication, right? Rather than writing a memo. So somehow that would connote uh, negative on the side of the employee. That's only my point of view. Then we have persuasive communication. This refers to proposals or applications for a government grant, funding, or partnership, especially research. Then lines should be convincing and positive to make an impression and hook the recipient to consider or act on a certain plan. Then business letter science. So we have this. Now, I don't um, include here the, the format, right? only the text, but the examples are actually indicated or shown in your module or course packet guide, course study guide rather, so kindly check, okay? So here, the first one here, sorry, the first one is full blocked letter style. Um, I usually uh, use this kind of style. For me, it is more convenient and most formal form of letter style. It is the most formal of all letter styles, when using full block, the paragraphs are single space with a double space between paragraphs. So it shows like this. Now with your copy, um, if you are using the letterhead, so you have there above letterhead, um, 
after that you enter just enter if you're using your laptop or computer twice so you have there three or uh, two to three spaces one two three enter then after that the date so the date for example january um, 19 2021 then enter again two spaces then after that and the inside address to whom you are going to um, address the letter right for example in my case um, i will write this to uh, the president like eduardo r Guillas. okay so the president university of the visayas Colon street cebu city okay. then after that enter two spaces then salutation so you start dear doctor uh Gullias or dear attorney Gullias. Okay. Then colon. Then another one, two spaces again. Then you start your body of the letter. So you state your site. For example, I want to apply for a job or you want to resign or you want to apply as a working student. Okay. So that's your body. That is only an example. Then after that, um, the last paragraph of your letter, like, I am hoping for your kind consideration or I am looking forward to hear you again soon. Then thank you very much. So after that, you enter again two spaces, then write your complimentary close. So you can state respectfully yours, sincerely yours, yours very truly, uh, truly yours, etc. Then comma, then three spaces okay two to three then three why because the one space will actually be allotted for your signature right your full name that's actually your we call that one signature line so your full name then your rank for example uh, rosie a mendoza faculty or your name then below student then make a signature on top so that makes three spaces right so that's it so that is an example of full black letter style so as much as possible especially when you're applying for a job the application letter should only be one page right so make it short here another one modified block letter style all text is aligned to the left margin except for writer's address date, complementary closing, and signature. The paragraphs are not indented. So the writer's address, date, complementary closing, and signature are usually indented three inches from the left, but can be set anywhere to set on the middle. So let's have this one an example. Maybe I did not include the format. Okay, wait for a while. So it says that, yeah. So, yeah, the left margin can be set anywhere to the right of the middle of the page as long as all three elements are indented to the same position. Okay. And then, they are similar with the semi, uh, modified semi-block letter style. It is frequently called modified uh, semi or semi-block letter because it is slightly less formal modification or full block format. So, we usually use this one for... Um, friendly letter. This letter style places the date line alignment then slightly to the right of the dead center. Another option for placing the date line is semi block and flash right. So I, I have this example. So you have the end. So the date is in the right side and then the inside address is in the left. The same space is plus. Okay? However, the date line and the complementary close together with the signature line, uh, it should be um, what the same line or margin. And then the body, um, the first word of each paragraph should be indented. So if you are using computer, just press the top, then start writing. The next paragraph, then start again or tab again, all throughout. Okay, so that's basically the format. We also have um, simply 
five letter style. Um, unlike whole block and semi block, it has fewer internal parts. This format is also the most widely used format in professional correspondence. It is focused and professional without unnecessary formality. Okay, so parts of the letter you have heading or the letter head. If you are applying for a job, of course, uh, we don't have, we don't need to use the letterhead, right? But um, if you are the department head, the manager, or what, um, we use the company's letterhead. So next is the date line, then the end site address, then salutation, body of the letter, complementary close. Okay, so those are the types or, or parts of the letter I mean. General tone and degree of formality. You know, there's respectfully yours, respectfully or very respectfully. Highly uh, formal use in diplomatic, governmental, um, ecclesiastical, correspondence to show respect and difference, a deference to a high rank, ranking aggressive. Then polite, neutral use in general correspondence, very truly yours, very truly or yours truly. Friendly and less formal, usually used in general correspondence, using sincerely. In my case, I am fond of using sincerely yours, right? It says that it's less formal. Okay, so... You can choose either of which, depending on um, to whom you would like to address your concern. So, well, there, most friendly and formal as ever, best wishes, regards, and then best regards. We do that one. Another one, yours cordially, cordially yours. So we do that. Okay, so those are just different tone, right? Degree of formality. So I hope you get the point. Then application letter class. So application letters give you an opportunity to make a strong impression on the employer. It is the way of marketing your skills. It can explain who you are and what you can do for them. And that is actually, application letter is one way of selling yourself. In other words, um, who you are, the best that you can. So in that manner, it's no not to be shy, and then the tone should be really formal, but not bragging, okay? So when writing an application letter, remember that you are probably have competition. In other words, one um, vacant position, you're not the only one applying for it. So there are many um, competitors that you have. So you have to give your best shot uh, when writing a letter. Your audience is a professional who screens and hires job applicants. Someone who may look through dozens of even hundreds of other applications on the day she receives yours. Okay, so remember that. The immediate objective, I'm sorry, of your application letter and accompanying resume is to attract this person's attention. Your ultimate goal is to obtain an interview. As you write your application letter, be sure to complete the three tasks. Catch the reader's attention favorably. Convince the reader you are qualified candidate for the job and request for an interview. There are actually many examples that can be found in the internet. So try to search um, the best um, tone of application letter that you want. You can also ask me or other professionals um, once uh, you want to apply for a certain job and prepare for an application letter. Now, there are types of application letter. Number one, solicited letter is a type of an application letter that is written response to an advertised job um, in a classified ads or in the internet. Unsolicited is uninvited is a type of an application that you initiate to tap into non-advertised jobs. Based on some clues on job openings from the other people, um, you know your friends, um, maybe um, somebody that you know working in that particular company, and then you believe that um, you're just thinking that they might be um, hiring for another um, applicant. 
cells. So that is an example of unsolicited. Okay. Then the resume is a summary of your qualifications for employment. It lets your reader um, know the type of position you are seeking and highlights your educational qualifications, your experiences and skills and other relevant information. Now, if, if, if you are a fresh grad, just graduated from college, um, when you talk about experience, basically it would be from your OJT, right? Own job training course. So you can include that one. But of course, if you are um, a working student, and then you can actually include that one in your experiences. A resume is a picture of you in words and maybe the only information a potential employer has to determine whether or not you will be interviewed. Okay? So make it also presentable or simple. Then we also have what you call electronic resume. Resume format allows you to make your information electronically friendly. There are two basic um, versions. Plain text, this version will allow you to insert resume into an email to cut and paste it into online application forms. Okay, Try to search um, the jobstrip.com. Okay then you will experience this one um, in that particular um, vacant position, right? Um, you are asked to insert your resume and application letter. So just copy and paste it. Then there you are. I'll send that one, then automatically the recipient will receive your documents. Then there is also what you call scannable. Employers are using electronic resume format to select prospective candidates through a process that involves scanning all resumes submitted into a resume management system database. They will then run search all resumes that use keywords that are related to the position they are recruiting for. Okay, so this one is kind of good. So once you insert your job strip in the jobstrip.com, for example, or any agencies online, then if that certain company would need uh, that particular position, then if you are chosen as one, then that's nice. Then preparing your, your electronic resume. In creating a resume, you are not developing a different resume. All information will basically stay the same, okay? Then the ordinary one. You must ensure that your resume will be recognized through the scanning process. Next is what include in your resume. The main heading on top is actually your name, address, email address. Then the right portion of your resume is your 2x2 um, two two or passport size photo. Then career objective. It's better to include your career objective. Then educational qualification, work experiences if you have, your skill, really important, the skill that really fits to the job you are applying for. The language skills, optional if you have, like, you know, Mandarin, um, Korean, and etc. So you can include that one. Then if you have awards and honors, you may include if you have activities and interests as well, if you wish to include. You may also include. In my case, I don't include that anymore. I include this one, very important. Member association. In other words, um, your affiliation. Okay. So another term for that one is affiliation, like um, you're a member of a certain organization. So you'll include that one. Then character references, at least three. Okay, so there are three kinds of references. Um, first is for uh, professional references, provide potential, potential employer with specific work habits and abilities. For example, in my case, um, my head or the dean, um, I would include them um, in my references. Academic references, professor, major um, in your major can attest your knowledge-based study habits. Okay, so my department head um, can attest uh, my ability. So I will include her. Then personal references. They're not usually recommended unless the potential employer specifically asks for them. These references usually include friends, neighbors, 
other acquaintances you know you well and understand your values and morals and integrity. Um, usually it is your colleagues. So I think that would be all um, different um, communication um, for work purposes. So those are the things that we need to know. So there are many um, business letter styles. However, in the module, specifically, we indicated their application letter initially. It is because that is um, most in demand um, types of letters. Okay. So I think that would be all. Then if you have questions, feel free to message me um, below our or in our MS Teams. Right? Thank you very much. See you again.